Congratulations. So finally, your uh, interview preparation process has come to an end. It's been some journey, I know. Um, but yeah, you've now received your well-deserved bouquet of offers. Right? <laughs> so first from Strategy End, then from Bain, then from McKinsey. So quite an achievement, I would say. So how would you now describe your mental state? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my mental state is great. I'm very happy, uh, but I'm not shocked because I worked so hard in the past eight months to um, land this offer and I knew I would, I would at least land one offer out of the three firms that I was interviewing with. Well, four firms, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you mentioned four firms because, I mean, uh, just to, to, to see the luxury position that you're in, um, uh, BCG called you into the final round. Uh, mm -hmm. But then you essentially declined them. So you said that you made your you, you made your choice, right? And uh, you will not uh, do the final round interviews with them. So, which firm will you join? Um, well, it was a tough decision, but I'm going to be joining McKinsey for various reasons. Um, they're well established, and um, they work in industries that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that I do want to um, stay in consulting for a short period of time, I do want to maximize my learning in this short period of time, and hence McKinsey is the best choice out of the three. Very understandable. So um, you uh, will join in the Middle East office, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, how has the recruiting process in this office evolved for you over the last I mean, it, yeah, we're still within crazy times, but over the last 12 or even more months, uh, it's been, yeah, it's been very, very, very crazy. <laughs> so how have, uh, how have things uh, evolved for you? Yeah, sure. So that's actually a really good question because I do want to talk about my experience as well as give advice for uh, the people currently interviewing, interviewing at those firms. Um, so in terms of my experience, I wanted to put my CV in, um, summer 2020 but i was advised not to by consultants at those firms uh, because they mentioned explicitly that uh, the process is currently frozen and hence i might be rejected just at the cv uh, stage yeah. uh, by the time it was around november december 2020 that's when i was given the green light for most of the firms and i put in my cv and once i put in my cv it took around like a month to schedule most of the interviews and it's like all of the firms agreed to have my interviews in February and uh, most of my interviews were in February so four weeks of just interviewing yeah um, so what I want to advise to people uh, currently putting in their CV is to actually get in touch with consultants from the office they're applying with applying to and just to sort of ask them if the uh, recruitment is frozen and when would be the optimum time to do so and then uh, second, to explain their position. So my, my position was a little bit weird where I'm not exactly a graduate and I'm not exactly an experienced hire, like I'm an in-betweener. So you could say that I'm not in high demand compared to those two. Uh, and hence, uh, you need to actually op optimize when to apply and know that there's demand for you at the right time. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly would be the fact that once you put in your CV, don't expect the interview dates to go according to what you want. So be prepared to actually be stressed and have all of the interviews all at once, uh, which, which is why you should actually prepare months and months beforehand because uh, the interview process can be over across, you know, three to four weeks and that may be really hectic for you. Yeah, yeah, like the ketchup bottle, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would... Like for me, I had um, interviews, maybe two interviews per week uh, mm. in the past four weeks. Yeah, so it was yeah. quite um, on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, because you were doing different rounds, right? And then uh, switching between the firms. Okay. Cool. So maybe let's talk a little bit about uh, the preparation we did together, right? Um, so because I mean, we have uh, covered extensively both the principles and the processes of the case interview. Um, but also the fit slash the personal experience interview, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, as you know, most candidates are approaching cases with, um, yeah, um, frameworks in the style of Case in Point, for example, right, and similar books, um, because, yeah, <laughs> these are the mainstream sources which everybody knows and where, um, yeah, essentially most people think that this is a given what you need to do. Um, we have, what we have done was, 
more or less completely d different, I would say, right? So uh, we have really dismantled case preparation uh, to its core. So in terms of the first principles of value creation. Mm -hmm. So what would you say? How uh, did this freedom of frameworks help you in being successful everywhere where you interviewed? Absolutely. So um, it gave me freedom and confidence that I can tackle the first part, which is where you make uh, the, your first impression, obviously. Uh, now, my story is a little bit different compared to most of your mentees. Um, unlike your mentees, they basically uh, were doing some cases before and they felt they were stagnant and then got in touch with you. Yeah. Whereas for myself, I just wanted the shortcut. I wanted the coach at the very beginning and I thought that you're going to give me the magic pill. Yeah. <laughs> so you did explain the logic. However, I failed to actually internalize it in initially. Mm -hmm. So what I went, what I went to do is I went on prep lounge and I did a couple of cases with uh, a lot of people, mm -hmm. and from there they would criticize the structure or the logic, mm -hmm. and so I went back to framework thinking, mm -hmm. and then I've realized that this is not making sense because here I am I've been doing like what thirty cases and um, the frameworks are not always working. They would work sometimes, but they wouldn't work in other times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I took a step back and decided to actually just purely structure cases, not do the analysis. Yeah. And here I went back over our recordings, um, over the notes you have provided me with, and I internalized it for a solid two weeks, just structuring cases. Yeah. And from there I realized that it's just, I, I could structure any case, like market entry, product, lo uh, product launch, M&A, all that, you name it. Yeah. yeah. But I would say uh, my personal advice for uh, people is that once they actually have that session with you is to take a step back before the case stru structure um, cases using your logic, in particular the brainstorming ones, mm -hmm. um, and then go on to do cases with others. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you touch on a very, very interesting and also important notion, right? And um, if you practice cases um, and you are using a sound logic as the one that we are uh, uh, that we have been developing right um, mm -hmm. and if you're then practicing with people who have been yeah quote unquote brainwashed into the into the bucket uh, framework mentality that you see in the books then especially when you're not very advanced already then you might run into the problem of getting a lot of uh, feedback, oh no, you should do this and you should mention all of these buckets, right? Tell me all the things you want to look at, right? And this then of course leads to a certain insecurity, right? Absolutely, it's social pressure. After all, like I got an advice from an experienced coach and interviewer like yourself and then, well, not experienced uh, candidates on prep lounge, but there's a large chunk of them telling mm. you to do this as well as coaches on prep lounge. Yeah, and yeah. so I felt this pressure where I had to go through this direction but thank God I went back to uh, <laughs> the logical way of doing things. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, cool. So, um, but um, let me also um, touch upon um, another field. Uh, for McKinsey, we have also digged very, very deep into their personal experience interview, right? mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty special also compared to all the other uh, consulting companies. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what do you think? How important was it to also spend so much attention to these stories and uh, um, <laughs> painfully uh, dig painfully deep into those stories and the rationals behind of all the things that you did and that you uh, how you communicated? So, what would you say? How important was that for your success? Um, it was very important, and um, based on my experience with you, is actually the last three sessions were purely just PEI, and I do not regret this. Um, so the first thing I want to say is the importance of PI in McKinsey as well as fit overall for other firms. Mm -hmm. um, essentially PI in my first round, uh, they would ask me severe like questions about the story. They would ask me, why did you do this? Why did you not do that? And if you had done it this way, then what would have been the result? So they're digging really through your rationale and it can be a bit overwhelming if you haven't prepared the story. Yeah. So you really need to prepare for it, uh, pre to prepare for it. Yeah. Uh, equivalently, um, in other firms such as Bain, mm -hmm. uh, one interview out of the three interviews that I've had in the final round was purely just fit, which mm -hmm. also goes to the fact that uh, they really do care about who you are as a person and the stories that you've uh, basically gone through your career and your personal life. Yeah. 
-hmm. and hence for all the firms it's really important to get this chunk okay yeah um, and then the second part is our PI uh, preparation, which was a long, hectic process. Um, we first started off by actually defining the uh, dimensions and what they mean and what is expected from that. Um, I then went on to do uh, three stories, uh, sorry, six stories in that case, three good ones and three backup ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I've sent them out to you, uh, you're able to give me feedback to refine my stories how to restructure them, and you were able to tell me the sort of questions or um, uh, the sort of, you know, um, areas where they need to be improved in terms of rationale. Yeah. And this helped me uh, continuously improve my stories. Um, I got that feedback from you, and I kept on, like, actually rewriting the stories with other people and telling them with other people in, or in order to actually come up with the best story possible. So this really, knowing my story really, really well helped me to answer any question in my first round, and it went great. Um, in addition to that, I just want to um, note one thing, is the fact that having those PI stories in depth helped me to actually uh, summarize competency-based questions uh, like BCG and Bain. Yep. Because each story, each PI story, has so many dimensions, has like initiative, leadership, conflict, you name it, everything. And so when you look at specific questions that BCG or Bain might ask you, like tell me about a time that you resolve a conflict in a team or yep. adversity, then you can easily just think of it that time, because you know stories really well, and summarize it in uh, two minutes. So it also helped in that direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very true, right? Uh, so essentially, those stories in McKinsey go very deep, but even though they go so deep, at the deeper level, they also have breadth, right? This is also something with sometimes people are not so aware. So they are actually very reusable or aspects of it are reusable also yeah. for the other also for the other companies. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so there's one additional um, aspect I wanted to touch on. Um, and that is um, what I'm doing with, with my mentees uh, once they have established a certain level, once we've uh, done a couple of sessions, is I like to put mentees in touch with, e with each other to start practicing with each other, to avoid the point that you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, right, that they have to deal with random people they find on the internet who don't even understand uh, the logic behind it. So um, I think uh, you were also practicing with, uh, uh, with one or two of my other mentees, right? Uh, at least I know for sure <laughs> from one guy who also received his BCG offer uh, uh, just uh, one or two weeks ago. So what would you say, how, how helpful has this also been to further, yeah, hone your, your, your skill and to become robust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I actually practiced with two of your mentees. One of them um, was interviewing for BCG Middle East, and he's the guy you introduced me to, and yep. he got the offer. Mm -hmm. And the second one, I actually met her via Facebook, mm -hmm. and she got an offer from McKinsey. So you can okay. see that most of your mentees got the offers. Oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> And um, it was a pleasant experience for, um, um, and it really helped me to sort of like improve my weaknesses and uh, try to be the best version of myself. Um, I would say there was two major significant differences between um, the mentee's feedback, your mentee's feedback versus people on prep lounge. Yep. Uh, the first difference was the fact that the feedback was concise. So they would tell me, listen, Raya, uh, you have a problem in X, Y, Z, fix it. Yeah. Whereas people on prep lounge would tell me, okay, your structure is good, but you need to add this, that was bad. Uh, your math was good, but you need to add this and that was bad. Your analysis was good, but you need to add this and that was bad. So essentially, you really don't know what area are you bad at. You're like, yeah. I'm semi-good in everything, but what am I bad at? What, where yeah. do I go? Yeah. yeah. So this concise feedback basically tells you what you should shift um, your focus on and hence um, uh, maybe... Uh, let's say that you're bad with math, quantitative aspects, then you could do ca cases with more uh, quant, so you can yeah. improve that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second difference was the fact that if they had to criticize something, they used to criticize the logic to come up, um, the logic that leads to the answer, and not the answers or the ideas themselves. And this is very important because, like you said, the logic is what leads to a good structure or uh, good ideas, uh, and ideas don't just fold because that's what you always say. Yeah. And um, 
on prep lounge, what happens is that people would tell me, okay, your structure was good, but you didn't mention, mention this part. Uh, your ideas were good, but you didn't mention this specific idea, like cross-selling products yeah. somewhere. So they so had a blueprint good. solution in front of them and they exactly. were just crossing off. Yes, absolutely. So they look exactly at the script. Uh, that was given in the casebooks. Whereas uh, your mentees would tell me, listen, um, the way you arrived to the answer can be improved. Why didn't you look at it from this way? Mm -hmm. uh, like, if you looked at it this way, then this could drive, um, this uh, driver could drive that, and so on and so forth. So we would look at different ways to come up with the answer and see which one is the most optimum one. Yeah. And this really helped sharpen um, the way I approach problems and improve that as well. Uh, rather than me just memorizing ideas, okay, in market entry, I need this, or in the oil and gas industry, I need to remember that, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, you need uh, carbon dioxide injection to get the oil out. You know, there's very, very specific things. Yeah. Um, and that really helped me to um, know that I can tackle any problem from yeah. any aspect. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, the famous first principles, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thanks for this great conversation. Um, when uh, will you actually start? Is this already set? Um, yeah, so they gave me starting dates and they told me that it could be May, June or September. Uh, I'm still debating. I did say perhaps June, so I can take a little bit of time to sort of like get out of the place I'm in at the moment. Yeah. Um, but we'll see how that goes, possibly September. Yeah. Yeah. As well, yeah. Depending on the situation. Awesome. Well, I don't think that you can go wrong, right? <laughs> Whether you start in June or in September, you're entering a great firm. Uh, you, I'm sure um, this, this uh, stint at McKinsey will be massively helpful for the rest of your professional life. Um, well, I speak from experience. <laughs> and uh, yeah, congratulations again and uh, all the best. Thank you. I'm really excited to join. And thank you so much for your support throughout, um, both in terms of improving my skills and mentally, because you've really helped with that. You're very, very welcome. <laughs>